Welcome back to our special coverage of the Modi Biden Super Summit, as we're calling it here on Times Now, the bilateral meeting that is in fact currently underway. And before I go across to our guests, I'd like to quickly uh, dip into the White House, where our correspondent uh, is joining us. In fact, uh, we're just going to be joining her in a very quick minute. But before I go across to her, let me get in a question from Samir Lalwani. Samir, you know a lot that's on the table today. It's a packed schedule today. Uh, of course, there's a ceremonial welcome that we all saw a few hours ago. Uh, there is a bilateral that is currently underway and a briefing that's expected shortly. After that will, of course, be the formal set of meetings with various officials and, of course, the address uh, to the joint session of the Congress. All in all, a packed day. What, for you, will be the biggest takeaway from the day today? Well, the biggest takeaway for me is the defense relationship that's being deepened between the U.S. and India. I think we saw some announcements coming out um, on the GE engine deal uh, and that is a very important signal from the United States that uh, um, partnering with India to build more capable, advanced fighter aircraft uh, that will be very competitive with the Chinese, be able to uh, produce in India, build downstream technologies, uh, and innovate based off of that. So it's a pretty path-breaking move. But there's also another really important story going on, which is sort of a bottom-up defense collaboration initiative uh, that was launched yesterday or announced yesterday. Uh, between the Pentagon and the Indian Ministry of Defense, and that's called Indus X, and that's basically uh, a defense accelerator program trying to tie our two innovation systems, our two defense innovation systems together to to um, to build capabilities, to build emerging technologies, uh, and to be uh, the most capable uh, partners in, in in various advanced domains. All right. Very, very important indeed. In fact, defense is a very key area that we've been discussing, Sabir. But, uh, you know, as an expert uh, in this particular area, as far as uh, uh, Asia is concerned, uh, what do you see as one of the key, you know, focus areas that the PM would address when he does address that joint session of the Congress? Well, I'm sure it has to include at least some aspects of our shared interest um, in the Indo-Pacific. Uh, we both share a desire for stability. Uh, for uh, the, the, uh, a multipolar Asia, for a multipolar Indo-Pacific, and the things that the United States and India can do together to build that stability and to uh, prevent conflict in the region. And certainly we've seen the consequences of when a major power decides to uh, aggress against uh, um, uh, a neighbor uh, in Ukraine, and not only is it the effects uh, felt by the, the regional players, but certainly it's global. Uh, there's economic effects, that downstream second and third order effects uh, that affects uh, f uh, supply chains, uh, food prices, energy prices. Um, and in the case of uh, what could happen in the Taiwan Straits, if, if uh, China was to aggress against Taiwan, the consequences could be 10x of that. And so I think it's in the U.S. and Indian interest to prevent such a consequence from happening by partnering together, by committing to a sort of shared political and economic voice for um, global stability, for Indo-Pacific stability, and to actually sort of take on deterrent actions together uh, that can prevent such consequences from taking place, allow for um, global economic growth, development, uh, all the sort of the agenda items of India's G20 agenda coming up in the fall. But uh, to do that requires peace and stability. Right. Let me take another question across to Charles Kupcher. And if I can play devil's advocate here, sir, certainly uh, nobody is denying that the technology transfer is a huge step. Now, certainly we've come a long way from uh, the era when there were perhaps uh, suspicions or trust issues. The very fact that there's a high technology transfer happening at that kind of level, when we're talking about fighter jets, which would make India the fifth manufacturer of uh, fighter jet engines in the world, uh, certainly, of course, is a big step forward. But there are, of course, those naysayers who would say that perhaps it's not yet cutting edge technology that is being shared. Perhaps that's going to take some time. How do you view this? You know, I would agree with Samir that, that this is a very big step because we are witnessing an element of deglobalization in the world, of friendshoring, of preventing China, for example, from getting high-end technology. And with India, we're doing exactly the same. We're doing exactly the opposite. We're sharing technology privileged technology. We're creating a, a downstream uh, uh, effort to, to continue this into the future. And so I think this really is a sign that as the United States looks over the horizon, sees a world that's much more complicated, it sees India as a trustworthy partner to whom it is going to transfer this kind of technology. And that's a signal, I think, both to India uh, and to the rest of the world that the United States, when it looks out at the world, sees India as a, as a partner in which it's going to invest 
uh, both the material sense, but also in a in the sense of of trust. So again, I I don't want to think I don't want to suggest that we get our expectations too high. This is a relationship that is going to take management on a day to day basis. The United States is going to have to get used to living in a world in which there aren't two clear blocks and everybody chooses sides. But this, I do think, is one of those pivotal moments in which the United States and India are, are consolidating their relationship in a historic way. But in the current context is, of course, the threat that emerges from China, not just uh, militarily, but also in terms of the possible role that India can play when it comes to trade ties. Of course, uh, when you compare India, U.S. and, in and U.S.-China uh, trade, there's perhaps no comparison. India is perhaps only a fraction. But... Uh, with these uh, technology uh, you know, transfers and, of course, uh, the tech ties between India and U.S. Uh, increasing, do you actually see this gap narrowing in the future? I'm sorry, was that to me? Ambassador Sajjanar, to you, sir. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah, thank you. I think your first few words uh, faded away. Uh, no yes, problem. I definitely do think so. You know, one of the... Uh, Actually, uh, reasons, uh, arguments that I would make in that uh, connection is uh, that just before Prime Minister Modi's visit, there is a huge, uh, big uh, opinion piece uh, by Wangi, you know, who is the senior most uh, Communist Party, uh, uh, you know, Central Committee member on uh, foreign affairs. And he has uh, castigated uh, uh, both the United States as well as India and the U.S. efforts to try to build up uh, India to substitute uh, China as a source for, uh, you know, uh, supply chains and, uh, you know, other semiconductor chips, et cetera. So which really does go to indicate that uh, China is uh, uh, worried, China is uh, anxious and nervous. Otherwise, uh, you know, an article of this nature could have come from the editor of the Global Times. Uh, it, uh, you know, didn't really need uh, Wangi to... Uh, pick up a pen and uh, uh, write this down. So obviously, it uh, uh, you know it has got uh, China rattled. And I would imagine that uh, you know the ma the way in which uh, U.S. India trade has been expanding, uh, it definitely is not uh, to the tune of what uh, uh, you know China uh, U.S. Uh, trade is. It's in the range of about uh, what 600 500 billion dollars. Uh, India U.S. trade is still a shade less than 200 billion dollars but then we also have our target of uh, reaching uh, 500 billion dollars uh, by 2025 we might not be able to get there but i think uh, the uh, energy that is being invested into uh, this uh, trade relationship into the investment relationship into the technology transfer not only in defense but in the other areas of uh, 5g of 6g of uh, uh, artificial intelligence, uh, quantum computing, and all the other areas, I think that definitely has the potential of, uh, uh, you know, getting many of the supply chains into India. Of course, India also has to, you know, step up its own uh, act in terms of uh, making itself uh, more user-friendly, more investor-friendly, more business-friendly, and that has been happening. Uh, for instance, from 142nd position uh, six, seven years ago till uh, I think the last uh, World Bank had come uh, out with its uh, report. I think India was uh, somewhere in the 50s or 40s. Right. So India has made progress, but of course we need to make uh, progress so that you know we are able to receive that technology and assimilate that technology coming okay. from outside. All right, we're going to come back to this question. It's a very important point indeed, but before we slip into a quick break again, those are live pictures coming in from the White House. The location for the briefing apparently has changed at the White House itself. Uh, perhaps they've gone in for a slightly bigger room to accommodate all of the journalists present at that location, but uh, we'll be bringing out to you live reports from the ground, a formal briefing that is to exp uh, that is to begin anytime now. It was scheduled to begin at around 10, 15 India time. We're about uh, uh, 20 uh, uh, minutes ahead of that, 25 minutes ahead of that. Uh, the briefing is scheduled to begin. We'll be back in just a minute. The news hour at 10 will be right.